Hello all, my name is Tavin Zaizi. I am a senior here at University of Wisconsin-Madison studying mechanical engineering. And as this is my first video, uh, I just kinda wanna give you guys an intro to my academic career here at UW-Madison. So I'm just gonna be going through my transcript for this video and kind of explaining each class that I have taken as a mechanical engineer and giving a brief background about each class and what I thought about it. So yeah. Let's get straight into it and I'll pull up my unofficial school transcript. First, a little coffee sip. So like I said, I am a senior currently. So that meant I started in the fall of 2020, which was right during COVID, which meant all my classes for my first semester were completely online. And let's go over the classes that I took. In the fall of my freshman year, I took General Chemistry 1, which is Chem 103, Com Arts 100, which is Intro to Speech and Communication. I also took Math 222, which is Calculus 2, and ME 201, which is uh, Intro to Mechanical Engineering. Start off with General Chemistry. This class is super hard, I'm not gonna lie. This was brutal. It has one of like the highest dropout rates in the university. It's a weed out class. They put it in the curriculum to weed out the students that can't be engineers. Commerce 100 is the easiest class of all time. I'll actually insert um, a little clip of one of my speeches. It's kind of informal and because it was during COVID, everything was um, remote and you filmed yourself giving speeches, which meant there was no pressure. Um, Math 222 was actually a retake for me. I took Calculus 2 in high school at the University of Minnesota doing college in school. Um, this class is also super hard, even though it was a retake for me, it was hard. It was really hard. Much harder than I thought it was going to be considering I knew all of the topics, but the class was online, which meant that the quizzes and tests were a bit easier because they were online. Uh, and the final class is my intro to mechanical engineering. This class was amazing. It was the first time that I actually got to work with my hands. It was a lab class. Even during COVID, we still had labs. Yeah, I'll insert a little picture of like the trolley car that I made. It was really, really fun. My next semester was obviously the spring of 2020. This semester I took uh, five classes, so I took 17 credits because it was once again online class. And for me personally, COVID classes were super easy because a lot of the classes were based off a curve, which meant if you simply tried a little bit, you were gonna do really good because most other students weren't trying at all. I took EMA 201, which is statics. And I took History 136, which is Sports, Recreation, and Society in the U.S. Uh, Math 234, which is Calculus 3. ME 231, which is Geometric Modeling. And MS&E 350, which is Intro to Material Science. EMA 201, which is Statics, was way harder for me than it should have been, even though it's just a super basics physics class. History 136 is an amazing class. I recommend anyone take that because it's a four credit history class, but it's all about race within society and how sports and recreation has progressed to the topic of race. It's super good in four credit class. Uh, Math 234 was honestly super similar to the difficulty of 221, which was just Calc 2. ME 231 geometric modeling was was a unique class because it was my first exposure to CAD and doing drawings. And that is a very applicable class to, you know, internships and work. And then the final class was MS&E 350, Material Science and Engineering. Um, completely pointless class in my opinion, because I learned nothing from it. I had a very not good professor, um, but he also wrote the textbook. So like he is the professor for that reason, but I learned very little from it and the tests didn't force you to learn. So it was actually an easy class. Uh, this semester I had a 3.92 GPA. So I got an AB in statics because it was a hard class, but everything else was fine. Moving into fall of 2021, this was the first time that I had in-person classes. And this meant that uh, it was quite hard, honestly. Like all of it was really, really hard. To start off, I took Computer Science 220, which is intro to Python. Amazing class, super applicable because it gives you all the background to data science and um, 
easy coding using Python. I then also took Math 320, which is linear algebra, and that class was super hard. One of the that's the least my least favorite class that I've taken here at Madison actually because it's so conceptual and the math is nothing is physical. You can't actually see the math. It's all conceptual. I also took ME 240, which is dynamics. It's the upgrade of statics. This is amazing class. Even though statics was hard for me, dynamics was so much better. It was interesting and it's like super fun. I also took ME 306, which is mechanics of materials and ME 307, which is the lab. And this class is super applicable to internships, um, interview questions. They always ask stuff from ME 306. Great class as well. I didn't mention it, but in the fall of my sophomore year, that was my first time having in-person classes, in-person tests, which meant there was a lot more at stake. There was much less lenience on what is allowed, and it made everything super hard for me. That semester, I had a 3.57 GPA, um, but I ended up, for all my first midterms, I actually got, uh, um, in dynamics on my first midterm, I got a 46 out of 100. In math, I got a 50 out of 100. ME 306, I got a 56 out of 100. So I didn't get off to a good start for that semester because that was my first time taking in-person tests. All right, bud, you can just keep telling yourself that. <laughs> but I ended up killing the rest of the tests. So it does show you that you can bounce back from doing bad. So don't worry if you do bad in your first tests. Now let's move on to the spring of 2021. I took four classes. I took ME331, which is computer-aided engineering. It's like basic CAD. I took ME361, which is thermodynamics. I took physics 202, which is physics, electric, and magnetism. And then I took statistics 324, which is intro to applied statistics for engineers. Uh, the computer-aided engineering class was once again amazing. It was super applicable to internships and practical work that you can put on a portfolio and show during your interviews or job application process. I learned how to use SOLIDWORKS really well in overall amazing class. ME361 is maybe not the most applicable class because it's thermodynamics, but amazing class. All of the problems are super long, like 25 minute problems in which you actually have to think and work through the problems, which is what I personally excel at. Uh, then I had physics 202, electric magnetism. I hated that class. Everything is so conceptual. I couldn't really apply it to real life, but I was good at it because it was all memorizing. It was only memorizing equations, nothing else. No applying the equation. Like you literally just had to plug and chug and memorize every equation, which made it really easy in my opinion. And finally, there's statistics for engineers. This class blew. It was statistics, but you only use coding. So you use a really ancient interfaced coding platform called R, which is what everyone uses for statistics because of its um, speed for computing numbers, but it's brutal. The interface is super bad and it's kind of hard to use. So I didn't like this class. I don't think I'll ever use anything that I learned in it. I don't know if I learned anything in it. Now, as we go on to the fall of 2022, I actually took a shot in the dark and decided to study abroad in Singapore at uh, Nanyang Technological University in the fall. While I was there, I took four classes. So I took Chinese level one. I took ECE 376, which is um, circuits, which this was a brutal class. I really didn't like it. But when you're abroad, all your classes are pass fail. So I didn't try nearly as hard for good grades because I don't receive grades, it's either pass or fail. But this class I struggled with. It was super conceptual. Once again, all the conceptual classes are hard for me. I'm not sure why. It's just how I am. I also took ME 311, which is which is materials and automation. In Singapore, it was a completely online class, so I didn't actually have a lab associated with it. It was all memorizing, straight up all memorizing, which made it really easy for me. But um, I know that in Madison, you actually have a lab class where you get to do hands-on work, which is really cool, but I didn't get that opportunity. And finally, I took ME 364, which is heat transfer. This is supposed to be one of the hardest classes, actually the hardest class within the ME curriculum, but all the questions are similar to thermodynamics. They're long questions we have to work through 
and I excel in that style of test. So I did good in this. In the spring of 2022, I once again studied abroad, but this time in New Zealand. Four classes in New Zealand, but once again, the classes are super low stakes because they're pass fail. So it didn't really matter. I put in low effort in the classes. I found New Zealand super easy to do school. Uh, specifically, I took BME 601, which is a special topic. It counts as one of your technical electives in order to graduate. I took ME 446, which is automatic controls. I meant to take ME 346, which is controls. It's a required class, but I accidentally took 446, which is the class that comes after ME 346, but I hadn't even taken controls. So I had to learn all of controls in the first month and then learn automatic controls. This was super hard for me, but I ended up doing good in the class, but it was super hard. I wouldn't recommend this to anyone. I also took ME 491, which is similar to capstone engineering project in which you get to do design work. Finally, I took an ME 601 class, which is another special topics class unique to New Zealand. Now let's move on to my senior year. So fall of 2023, I took History 347, which is the Caribbean and its diasporas. Amazing class. It's four credits. It's an intermediate history class and it counts for your ethnic studies. Highly recommended to everyone. The professor was so good, made the class super interesting. I also took ME 340, which is dynamic systems. It's the same as controls, but I had already taken automatic controls, learned all of controls. So this class was super easy for me. I didn't even have to study for any of it. ME 342 was my next class that I took, which is design of machined elements. I really disliked this class. I had a new professor for this class as the teachers had switched the year before and my professor was not good. He didn't know very much about the topics. The tests were poorly written. I really didn't like it. I also got a B in it, which is because I didn't like the class. And I also took fluid dynamics, which was a good class. It is super easy, but I got a B in it because on the first test, I missed one of the questions. Like I submitted my test and didn't answer one of the questions because I, I just missed it. I didn't check the back of the page. And that resulted in me getting a B in the class because I lost a lot of points on that test because of that. So. Uh, Make sure you always check the backside of tests for questions. Last semester I had the lowest GPA, which was a 3.423, which is because I took a class that I didn't like and I missed a question on fluid dynamics. It is what it is, nothing you can do. This semester I'm currently taking ME 351, which is my capstone project, but I actually did an internship abroad, which counts as a study abroad in South Korea, where I worked as an English and marketing intern. It's a scholarship through the school, but that meant that I didn't take any classes except my capstone project class, ME 351, because ME 351 and ME 352 need to be back to back. But that wraps up my academic career so far. I have one more semester left. I'll be graduating in the fall of 2024 in December, and I'll be taking five classes next semester, which is kind of a heavy load. But I wanted to thank you guys for watching. And if you found this helpful, if you're a student looking at UW-Madison or you're a current engineer at UW-Madison or any college, consider subscribing to my channel because I will be going through all things engineering, mechanical engineering, resumes, internships, all of that stuff and uh, I'll be providing helpful content to young engineers. So thank you guys for watching. Retweet, give a subscribe. Peace.